Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Traditions Podcast. My name is Inga, and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. I live on the west coast of Norway, and when I'm not working as a doctor, I spend my time knitting. And I knit a lot, because it's what I enjoy doing, and it brings me both comfort, joy, and it relaxes me. So settle in with something to drink if you like, and let's talk about our knitting. I'm enjoying some tea that I got last week, some hibiscus black tea blend. Um, I've got one of these things that you can put in whichever cup you have, and I uh, use some loose tea, and I'm really enjoying um, using loose tea. So that's what I'm drinking. Okay. Let's see. I am wearing this sweater right here. If you want to know about how I made this, because this is not a pattern, this is something that I self-drafted. Uh, you can look back at the previous episode and the one before that it has even more um, details on what I did but I knitted top down with some drops Alaska yarn after doing the raglan I did some striping uh, was five rows and ten rows and alternated and then I did a folded down collar that I tacked down and the same for the sleeves they're tacked down on the inside the body has a split front and back where it's longer in the back. I can put a video here of uh, me wearing it if that's of any interest. All right, so since last time I went to Tromsø, which is in the north of Norway, I didn't see any northern lights, sadly. It was cloudy and just didn't have any luck. I also went to Trondheim for another course uh, for my work and it was really nice. I visited some yarn stores. I didn't buy any yarn in Trondheim, um, but I did buy some yarn in Tromsø, so I'll show that at the end. And um, I have some finished objects that I finished on the trip to show you. I also have some whips that I was working on on the trip. Um, sorry. The first day that I got to Tromsø, my luggage didn't arrive. Thankfully, I had a whip in my uh, purse, so I did have something to knit on, and that was uh, a blessing. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have it. That would have been a boring day. Oh. Sorry, a tractor just drove by shoveling snow. It's snowing outside today. And not the good kind of snow, but like the wet kind of snow. I'm not excited about it. It means it's going to be not good driving conditions. <laughs> okay, so. What to begin with? All right, I just had to go and get uh, the scrap yarn that I have left from the next project that I'm going to show you. This is a test knit that I did from the lovely Camilla behind the podcast and indie yarn dyeing business, Cami Jo Knits and Cami Jo Yarns. She created the melancholy hat pattern and she asked some of us podcasters in a, in a chat group that we have if would be interested to, in testing it. So she gifted me the yarn to test this for her. This is her melancholy hat and it uses a Stellina base. The name of this one is not on the tag of this one because this is the undyed base, but it's her sparkle glitter base. Um, I used the undyed and then paired it with a dyed silk mohair, which is the Happy Hunter colorway. I'll double check that. It's, yeah, the Happy Hunter 
with 72% kid mohair, fine kid mohair, and 28% silk. So this is the Happy Hunter colorway, and this is the undyed, and together they made this really beautiful fabric. So you can see how the, the hand dyed silk mohair adds like a speckled um, coloring to the hat. Now it does not show up on camera um, how beautiful of a sparkle it has. The best way to describe the sparkle is when you're cross country skiing or just out in the snow on a really nice sunny day. And you can see like the glistening on the snow on the horizon, like tiny little sparkly diamonds. That's what it looks like. Now I'll take it on for you and give myself some hat hair. I also took a photo of this in Trumsem that you can see. So I made the smallest size. There are two sizes. I have a small head, so I made the smallest size. It's supposed to be sort of a relaxed slouchy beanie, which it is, and oh, hat hair, yes, uh, and it's a really lovely pattern. It went by really quickly because you hold the fingering weight double and then a third strand of silk mohair, so I think it was a 16 stitch gauge, if I'm not mistaken. Now, measuring gauge and ribbing I always find a bit difficult because it all depends on how much you stretch the ribbing because ribbing is quite stretchy. Um, I blocked it to the 16 stitch gauge and it fits nicely. It's nice and snug on my head, not too tight. And I used the recommended needle that was in the pattern. So yeah, the crown decreases are really beautiful. So pretty. So yeah, this is the Melancholy Hat by Kami Jo Knit, I think is her designing handle, and then Kami Jo Yarn is her yarn handle. And she's following her dream, um, so go support her if you like the look of it. I think it's really beautiful and the yarn is really beautiful, so I was honored that she would let me test for her. Another finished object that I have to show you guys is also a test knit. And I finished the Ruska sweater by Eniko Balu. Balu? I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not good with pronunciations. Um, in my little project book, I have the specs if I can find the page. Let's see. Yeah, so it's the Ruska sweater pattern by Eniko Palo. <laughs> the yarn I used was Gilead by Dererum Natura in the color Povra et Sel and Fore. I used um, 3.5 and 3.75 millimeter needles to get a 20 stitch gauge. I knit the size medium and I used 260 grams and it took me about two weeks to finish this beauty. So this is a top-down circular yoke and then it has also just a little bit of color work detail on the bottom of the body and the sleeves before doing the ribbing. Now I followed the pattern as instructed, including the lengths and everything for the medium size. Uh, she has not released it yet because she still needs to uh, take some photos and I'm not sure if she's done editing the pattern with the feedback that I gave. Um, she has released this pattern before in a finished magazine and there was a few little discrepancies between the written instructions and the chart. but. I believe she will have fixed that because, well, I messaged her about it. Um, it's a beautiful design. I found the way of doing the charts really interesting because you had to read the text and then it told you where in the chart to begin for the different motifs so that it would be centered 
at the front. So that was really nice. The Gilead is knit on quite a tight gauge, so I'm interested to see how it wears, if it will pill less. Uh, I think this yarn could easily be knit on bigger needles with a looser gauge than a 20 stitch gauge. Uh, it's very warm, it's very soft for, um, for this kind of 100% non-superwash wool. It's a very, um, yeah, it's, it's a rounded feeling. I really like it and I'm excited to, to wear it and see, see how it goes. So yeah, this is the Ruska sweater by Eniko Balo and hopefully she will have it released soon. Uh, and hopefully she'll also make um, some bigger sizes. Uh, I believe it goes up to a 2XL. Uh, at least when I was testing it, that was um, the size range. And it's so beautiful, so everyone should be able to knit it. Um, because it's a beautiful colorwork yoke design. Uh, as yeah, I used 260 grams. The Gilead comes in 50 gram balls. So if I were to have knitted the body two centimeters shorter, I could have gotten away with not having to use the fifth ball of the main color. So if I were to make it again in the future, I'd probably just make the body slightly shorter and save on having to buy one ball of yarn. There is enough of the main color and the contrast color to make a hat though, so that is something I might do. It would be nice to make a hat with like a green brim and then maybe do some like color work above that and then do the decreases. I haven't decided. I feel like there is a hat like that out there somewhere with trees as the color work. I have seen it as a sweater and that is on my list of things that I want to knit, but it would be cool to have a hat like that too. Maybe that exists. Who knows? Yeah, so those were my finished objects. I do have a sweater to show you that I didn't show last time, so I'm gonna go get that one. Oh. Running up and down the stairs. Okay, so I'm back. This is finished. I didn't show you last time because it was blocking. This is the Björk Raglan by Woodlands, Woodland Knits, Woodlands Knits. Uh, it's a top-down raglan sweater that uses a combination of unspun yarns, two strands of Nutiden and two strands of Plötulopi, the Icelandic yarn. And I used two cakes of Plötulopi and I think I used three cakes of Nutiden. I think, yeah, I think th three or four cakes of knitted in. I think maybe three, Th three or four cakes of knitted in. I should probably weigh this and see how many grams it used up. I can put it on to show you guys. Quick like costume change. Um. Alright, so this is like an instant warm hug, to be said. I have not worn it yet. I was gonna bring it to Tromsø, but I decided to bring my green Guernsey Genser instead, just because I wanted to bring that color and I had limited space. The imp information that I have noted down is that this is the Björk Raglan by Woodlands Knits. The color of Nutiden that I use is Fliseline and the Plotolope is the color Rust. I knit the size 3 in the pattern and I use the needle size 4.5 millimeters. Uh, now, I don't know if I actually gauge swatched or not. I should probably 
check my gauge for this but I don't know if I have anything here to check my gauge with uh, I am such a bad podcaster oh no I found a ruler so we can check my gauge right now for you guys I'm just gonna do it on my on my sleeve like a quick estimate of my gauge let's see then one two three four five six seven fourteen fourteen stitch gauge now i don't remember what the gauge was supposed to be for this one so future me editing this will put it here and i got a 14 stitch gauge at least on the color work on the sleeve where I just measured it. Um, I think if I were to make this again, I would make it bigger. Um, I love my Guernsey sweater a lot more than I thought it would. I thought it was huge, but that's actually what I love so much about it. It's just a big tent of coziness. Now this one, I mean, it's, it's bigger than me. And it has some positive ease, but at the bust, it's not, it's not a huge amount of positive ease. And I feel like with this fabric, which is quite chunky and thick, by just being slightly bigger ease, it makes me look a little bit bigger than I am. While as with the Guernsey sweater, you see that it's obviously oversized. So I don't know, people have different styles. And right now I'm into the, the oversized and this one is just, it is oversized, but you might think that it's not oversized. So if I were to do it again, I'd probably make the size four just to have it even bigger and more oversized but the color work is stunning I opted for straight sleeves and a long ribbing and on the body as well it's um, the ribbing I followed the amount of striping on the body that was in the pattern when it came to the sleeves in the pattern photo it looked like it had a lot more repeats of color work I think at least two more but that would have made the sleeves way longer um, on me. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stripes from here to the bottom on the sleeve. And I did the same on the body. So yeah, slightly longer ribbing on the sleeves though than the body. So they are slightly longer than the torso or body of the sweater. But I'm really happy with it and actually now that I'm looking at it on screen with you guys I think it's a lot better looking than when I tried it on in the basement after blocking it so I think I do think it's gonna get a lot of wear and just because it's so warm and cozy and I just want to make so many more unspun garments just because I love wearing them. They're so lightweight and so squishy and I find them to be soft. I think if I were to have done the plotilopi next to my neck, it would have been more irritating for me, but the new titan is really nice and soft. And I did end up tagging the neckline down because it was um, looking like a turtleneck standing up and it was a bit tight and I find, found that by by tagging it down and blocking it, it gave a bit more, more room for my neck. Um, but still, I can still snuggle up in it if I if I get really cold. So, yes, really happy with this one. And um, I don't have any unspun projects on my needles right now, but I do want to cast on one. And I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna do the Amy slipover with the remainder. Of this yarn that I have in my stash with a silk mohair or if I'm gonna cast on a sweater in the Hillesburg charcoal color maybe I'll cast on both but for me knitting with unspun is one of those knitting on the couch 
projects just because the yarn is fragile so I don't want to throw it in my bags and take it with me so we'll have to um, figure out what we're gonna make but yeah excited for more unspun projects I uh, I'm just loving them the um, this one is with two strands of unspun the Guernsey Genser hair that I made is two strands of unspun with the silk mohair I have one sweater that is two strands of unspun and that one does pill quite a lot um, the Guernsey Genser pills a little bit I just think it's a lot more unspun than the silk mohair can handle so it does pill a bit but the Amy slipover that I used one strand of unspun with one strand of silk mohair that one has not pilled at all and I use it all the time so I think uh, for me I find that pairing it with silk mohair just improves the fabric quite a bit without making it less soft for me because I'm not I don't find mohair scratchy so lucky in that way I think it would also be beautiful paired with a Suri alpaca mm. so many beautiful yarns out there now uh, let's get into our webs or we'll be sitting here all day but I just want to enjoy some tea before it gets quite cold So, whips. I have been knitting on my advent blanket that is using up minis from the Zakami advent that I got for myself in December 2022. I got two of their advents, their um, fingering weight and their Suri base. And between the colors, I'm just doing a few stripes of this alpaca cone that is from uh, Filati, an Italian brand. I bought this in Poland years ago and it's beautiful and soft. I just didn't know what to do with it. I had 200 grams. So I decided to put it into this blanket. So I've just been doing stripes until I run out of the the minis and then interspersing them with with the alpaca just to have some sort of um, uh, red thread throughout the blanket now um, the colors the tones are definitely me I'm not much of a, a speckled variegated person I'm more like um, solid colors or tonals uh, but I think it's beautiful and this is reminding me of the burrows I think it's called the burrows um, in Harry Potter um, so the Weasley family their home I feel like this would fit right in there and this blanket I'm intending on having at the cabin uh, it's quite a lot wider than I thought it would be so it's probably gonna fit like a queen-sized bed um, I'm not using all the colors of the advent I have taken some out which were more in the blue family and if it's not gonna be long enough I'll just add them back in um, so that is fine with me and yeah I'm currently working on one of the fingering weight ones and I think when I went to Tromsø I had knit this much and then I was without my luggage and yeah during during the trip and the flight trips and everything I knit this much so three more colorways this one this one and this one and I just started this yesterday when I got home and it's been quite enjoyable to knit on it's just garter so you're just knitting back and forth I'm using 3.75 millimeter needles for the Zakami yarns and because the alpaca yarn is a slightly thinner yarn it's more like a light fingering weight I am knitting the rows of that one the brown rows 
I am knitting using four millimeter needles. So I do have to change the needle size between the stripes. I mean, I, I could have blocked it out no problem, but that's what I've decided to do. And it looks like it's working quite well. It's not like cinching in or out between the stripes. So I think it's good. I've also been doing an I-cord edging on both sides. So the last two stitches on the row, I slip with the yarn towards me. I just slip them onto the needle instead of knitting them. Then, my, then I turn my work and I just start knitting and that creates an I-cord edging. I'm sure you can find some YouTube videos. Maybe one day I'll get around to recording some snippets and call it a tutorial or something. But for now, there are probably great YouTube videos out there if you search for it. So that's what I've been doing. So this is gonna be a forever project. Um, it's starting to be a little bit too big to take as a travel knit. Um, so maybe I'll just have it on the couch or in the car or at the cabin somewhere for just something slow and mindless. Now, I have been knitting more slow and mindless projects on this trip. I have made quite a few squares for my square blanket that I've been doing for the past year. I was knitting on this last year as well. I am just creating many, many garter squares using Rauma Finul in all the earthy colors. So browns and greens and rust and gray and beige and all the great colors. My favorite ones are the heathered ones from Finul, uh, from Rauma Finul. I just think they're beautiful. So I made quite a few squares, as you can see. I'm doing 30 stitches on, I checked, it's a 3.75 millimeter needle. And then I knit until I have 29 garter bumps on each side. I've checked that as well. <laughs> and then I bind off on like the 30th um, garter bump row. And that creates a square. And last time, so many people contacted me with great techniques for joining them. So I am tempted to take out my crochet hook and start crocheting a border around them and then joining them. So I don't know how big this blanket is going to be. I have a lot more phenol yarn to knit up. I might just keep knitting squares and then maybe I'll have enough at some point to make more than one blanket. I want to make a big one, um, but if I have leftover squares, I could make baby blankets, just, you know, sew them together or crochet them together and voila, got a gift knit. So yeah, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I made several little squares when I was away. This is also a really good uh, on-the-go knit because it's mindless and small. So I've really been enjoying this. Another whip that I have is this. This is a self-drafted functional sweater that I'm making for myself for skiing. It's a top-down raglan with a rolled neckline. I'm making it a bit oversized in Tinder Pelsel because I've made a sweater in Tinder Pelsel before that I've gone cross country skiing with and over time it's sort of felted a bit. So I wanted to make sure this one had a lot of extra room so it can felt over time. And honestly, the felting is something I'm looking forward to because it gets a beautiful halo. It already has a halo from the peltful fibers. Um, which are beautiful, but it gets really fluffy um, and hairy once, once it felts up a bit and it softens up the more you wear it. So I have split for the body and sleeves. I had done that last time as well, and I am now knitting on the sleeve. Now I will be making some decreases just because um, an open wide sleeve like this is not good for 
having it as a layering piece when skiing because you want to put a jacket on so I do want the sleeves for this to be tapered usually I love an open sleeve but for this one it's going to be tapered and long sleeved um, longer than I need so that it can shrink up and still fit and then there will be the body which I'm intending on splitting for front and back and then just probably knitting it straight down for a bit and then round it so that it's going to cover the butt and the front thighs for some extra warmth and this is the yarn that I'm using this is the Tinda Pelsul or Pelth wool and the color is natural gray I believe yeah Naturgras so this is they're undyed, which is my favorite. I have knit several of their dyed Tinda as well, but this one is softer to me. I think the dyeing process um, hardens up the yarn a bit. So my favorite is the undyed one. And I should have plenty of yarn, I think. I have two more cakes after this cake and I'm already this far along. The, the yoke and the body has used two balls so far and now I have three balls to go so I should be good. So really enjoying this one. I'm knitting it on four millimeter needles and yeah I'm using some Nipro on the body and on the sleeves I'm using my Haya Hayas. And yes. I have one more whip to show you and then I have some acquisitions. So, first something to drink. Okay. Now, the next project I cast on while I was on the trip. So I went to a knitter's market sort of like a knitting festival for it was a one day in Oslo and I bought this yarn after seeing a sample at a yarn stand now the base is Hillesvog Ask which I've knit with before for color work and I love it but this was a hand dyer if I can get the label out who has dyed the base with her colorway the the stand that I went to was Snoopagarn, which means candy yarn. And it's her logo. Snoopagarn. Now, it doesn't say on the label here what yarn it is, but I asked at the stand and the base that I got is the Usk from Hillesvog. She had made the Islander Genser by Rauma at her booth in a green yarn with a speckled contrast color and I just thought it looked really beautiful however this color called out to me and she had two speckled yarns so this yellow one with like rust and a little bit of pink tones to it and then she had a white one which was a lot more pinkish speckles now I would usually not go for this kind of color. I'm not a huge yellow fan. Like I like my rusts and my warm tones, but not a big fan of yellow, but I thought they would look really nice together. I bought three balls of this and two balls of this because she said that would be enough to make the sample that she had made. When I got home, I googled the Islander by Rauma and I was able to find it as a free pattern in Norwegian. Haven't been able to find it in English. Uh, however, I saw that that was knit bottom up and it called for more yarn than what I had, if I remember correctly. So I did not want to play yarn chicken when I'll not be able to get more of this because it's it's hand dyed and yes, I got what she had. So I decided that I do want to make the Eastlander because that's why I got the yarn, but I want to make it top down so that I can do the sleeves and then do the body until I run out of yarn. So I took the 
chart from the pattern, which is a chart that I've seen in a lot of Eastlanders. I think Sanneskarn, if not the same, very similar color work chart. But besides that, I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> Freestyling again. So I have gotten this far on my freestyle Eastlander. So what I did is I cast on for the neckline with 2.5 millimeter needles and I just did some ribbing with a stripe of the base color. Now when you want to change color in ribbing, the first row when you join the second color, knit all the stitches. If not, you'll have pearl bumps of one color sticking into the other color. So I did that to avoid that. I, after doing the neckline, I wanted to do some German short rows to raise the back. And I couldn't decide if I was gonna do it in the ribbing or if I was gonna try and doing it in the color work. In the end, I decided to just do it in the main color. So in the back, there is a stripe of the main color before starting the color work. Now, if I were to do it again, I would probably try to do it in the color work and have more of a raised back because this is not enough. I don't know how I like the neckline. It's a bit high in the front because I haven't done enough short rows. So when I finish the sweater, depending on how much yarn I have left, I might go back and unravel the the neckline. I have been able to cut into my sock tubes and do an afterthought heel. So I'm thinking it should be possible to cut into my knitwear and knit in the opposite direction. Technically it should be possible. I haven't done it before, but it would be a nice challenge. Maybe I'll do a turtleneck instead um, or do some short rows in the ribbing. I, I don't know. But we'll get to that when we get to that. After that, I divided for uh, raglan, so four points. Um, that's what I did. Um, and then I just started knitting with um, the color work chart that is in the Eastlander. And it's a free pattern, so I can say it. I also don't think they own this chart because I've seen it in other designs, but it's basically a square. And then there are two stitches that alternate precision. So it's a six stitch repeat. And then you do that color work for two rows and then you do two rows of just the main color. And that's the whole color work. Now, not a fan of this color on its own, but I think that in the Eastlander, it's just so, it gives an interest that you kind of just want to look closer and see what's going on. And I'm, I'm loving it. I did a little bit steeper raglan, um, just because I wanted to be a bit oversized. The sleeves are quite oversized. The body could probably be even more oversized than I've made it, but I think it's going to look nice either way. Uh, I was trying it on and the length that the sleeve is right now is just at my elbow and it was kind of looking cool as a short sleeved thing, but I don't know if a wool color work garment works as well as a t-shirt as, as it does as a sweater, just because it's it's really warm, but then if you're short sleeved, your hands are cold. So I might just <laughs> finish it as intended with longer sleeves. And I am doing um, some decreases to, to make the sleeves a little bit <laughs> smaller than they are because they are quite wide now. I think I picked up 22 stitches um, underneath the armhole to make both the body uh, the body I didn't pick up 22 stitches, but I did pick up 22 stitches when picking up the sleeves on the stitches that I made and on the sides, because there's going to be a gap if you don't pick up a few extra stitches. Uh, so I did that. So the sleeves are quite voluminous at first, and the body is also going to have positive ease. But I think it's just, ah, uh, it's really nice. 
Uh, the way I knit color work, I hold both the strands on my left index finger and I place it on my knuckle. I moved the camera in this way and then I'm just picking one strand or the other so the yarns don't tangle around each other and because it's an equal amount of rust and yellow stitches in the color work uh, I don't have the problem with one strand being tighter than the other one because I don't use it as much so it's quite a balanced color work which is really nice and it's quite mindless because it's the same repeat over and over again and then you get to do two rounds of just the main color. Now, when I started the color work, I initially started the round in the middle of the back, but after two rounds of color work, I realized why am I doing this to myself? Because I will have like a slight jog uh, in the color work in the middle back when I'm doing a raglan. So I cut the yarn and then I started the color work at the raglan instead because then you don't then you don't see it. Now underneath the sleeves and on the side of the body there will be like a slight jog in the color work um, but like can you even see it? It's not even that visible. Now when picking up the the sleeve stitches I just made sure that um, it was gonna match the color work so that I had enough stitches to sort of be divi divisible by six but also that it f it matched the color work before and after where I picked up the stitches so I just adjusted for that um, I also made my life a little bit harder but I wanted when I picked up the stitches under the sleeve I wanted it to kind of continue as a color work all the way down as like an invisible pickup and in order to do that I had to um, do a German short row and knit back so that I had two, two rows of the main color because when I picked up it would have been one round of main color and then go into the color work so it would have been too tight here so I did a German short row to adjust for that and the other half I knit back with the tail end that was left from picking up and that made me be able to start in the middle underneath the sleeve with um, a cohesive color work patterning. So this is where I picked up stitches under the sleeve but it's quite invisible so I thought that was um, nice and clever so I was really happy with that. And then I did the same on the second sleeve and now I'm just on sleeve island and I'm still on the first ball of the yellow so it's a hundred gram cake and I've gotten quite a lot of sweater out of it now I did have to join the second ball of this and then I have the third ball untouched but both the sleeves are kind of halfway done just the forearms left and then the body so I should be fine I could have knit the pattern bottom up it's um, it's a color work sweater it's on three millimeter needles so it's not the fastest but it's quite addictive um, to just see the color work and how it plays together so I've gotten quite a bit far further on this than I thought I would and yeah as you see I knit half a sleeve and then I started knitting the other sleeve to the same length just because I wanted to see how I liked it with short sleeves but probably it's gonna end up long sleeved for functionality of it all no yes maybe we can just smoothly transition into some acquisitions so when I got home there was a beautiful parcel waiting for me from Lisa from unwind and knit with me she has an online store and she contacted me and asked if I would like to um, try some of her project bags 
and her project bags were gorgeous so I was honored to accept and the project bags that she has she has different um, styles but it's a hundred percent leather made in South Africa and then the lining of the bags are genuine shwe shwe fabric which is a strong cotton used in traditional South African clothing and I'll just show you the bags right now because I have <laughs> I have my whips inside it so this is the large bag that she sent me and I'm carrying this beautiful color work inside it I just thought that it was a bunch of happiness together so it has the leather um, strings handles and then it has big pockets two on this side and a big one on the outside here and then on the inside is that beautiful cotton fabric that she was telling writing about and I just thought it was beautiful I'm loving this fabric right here now this bag also has this beautiful possibility if, if I'm traveling so I can put my stuff in there and I am making a mess of my yarn because I've been showing you guys but yeah then you can close the drawstring right and it's all nice and tucked inside there's also some pockets on the inside here now I'm never really good with using pockets and bags I like to just throw it in the bottom so in the bottom of this bag I've thrown my needle and my my ruler but it does have some some nice pockets that are sewn to the inside of of the leather all the way around so that is really nice beautiful beautiful bag I'm really excited I love leather bags and I love my knitting and combining it even better so this is the big bag that she sent she also sent a beautiful bucket bag and this is just stunning this is the perfect bring to a cafe knitting bag for me because it also stands up on its own and again one big pocket and two smaller pockets on the outside perfect for my phone and car keys I'm actually going to a cafe today and this is what I'm bringing inside this one so this one doesn't have like the drawstring closure so it's more of an open bucket bag but it has the same beautiful lining and as you can see here I'm actually using the pockets um, I have yarn in here for the blanket so currently I am putting my Harry Potter style blanket in here it still fits and she sent some um, stitch holding tubes like these that you can put on your needles and oops as you can see I am a fan I am using it for both this project and the sleeves on and the body on this project so those are beautiful I think I'm gonna keep one of these and then I'll put one of these into a future giveaway for you guys so she sent those gorgeous thingies and then she sent this one which I was really excited about this is a Kitchener stitch uh, keychain sort of cut out and I always have to look up how to do a Kitchener stitch and I've seen some of this on Instagram but I haven't found it here in Norway because Kitchener stitch is not a common technique used in Norwegian patterns um, or way of sock knitting really so it's um, yeah I haven't seen it here but she sent this with the parcel and this is gonna come with to great use and yeah really really happy with both of these beautiful bags and I am honored that she thought of me and I'm very very lucky and they're gonna get a lot of good use so if you're interested please check her out um, I love her products and I think they are great her store is unwindandnew.com and I will put links below. 
And yeah, I did get some other acquisitions that I bought in Tromsø. So I went to some yarn stores there. There is one at a mall called Yekta. I know some people do go with Arn and Carlos and that does go to Tromsø. So I was able to find some knitting for olive silk mohair cones. Now, in my previous stash enhancement video, I was talking about silk mohair cones that I bought some online because you're not able to find these anymore. Uh, but that store actually carried five colorways or so of the Knitting for Olive silk mohair on cones. And it was on sale, so... This color speaks to me. This is like a rust color. Love this. So I had to get this one. I think it's 200 grams, so it should be enough for one to two sweaters. It's a 70% mohair and a 30% silk. 1800 meters now this color is not a color that i particularly like that much i don't know if it's i don't think it works that well with my skin tone but i do have some unspun yarn from nuted in that i just i can't seem to find the right silk mohair to pair with it so i saw this and i thought this would work I also have another cone of um, Knit Rennie, I believe, in a pinkish colorway that I'm gonna use for uh, gift knitting. And I thought this would work well with that for, for gift knits for those people I know who do enjoy colors like this. So a sash enhancement to work with the sash that I have. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. There was another store. And this store was in the center of town, in like the main street of Tromsø, where all the tourist shops are. <laughs> I felt like a tourist in my own country. And I have this pattern in my stash, which I think is called the Checkmate Sweater by Kai. Some, I'll put his name here. And uh, I've been wanting to knit that for one of my brothers, most likely. I don't know if Matthias would like it. And I saw these colors, which are quite similar looking to the, I think he uses Brooklyn tweed in his pattern. And I just thought these colors would look really well. This is a base that I haven't tried before. It's from Viking Garn Eco Highland Wool. This is the label with the cute sheepies. Now for the pattern, it told, told me that I would need four balls of each color. So that's what I got. And it's an affordable, non-superwash wool. I felt this next to the... Um, Phil Corlana Peruvian Highland wool and it felt quite similar. Um, this was cheaper and it was on sale so I got this and I thought the colors were were really nice. Um, so yeah, I got these four colors to make the Checkmate sweater and I also <laughs> couldn't resist since there was a sale. I got the Drops Alpaca Boucle. I have never knit with a Boucle yarn before, but I've been wanting to recently. I've seen some patterns and um, now I don't know if I'm going to enjoy knitting with it because it's typical to just snag your needles on the little loops on the yarn, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Um, I found a page on the Drops website where they talk about their um, like ethical issues, questions, and where they get their fibers and yarns for Ecotech certified and etc. So that was a good resource. So if you're interesting in, interested in knowing more about Drops, because it's such an affordable yarn, a lot of people have questioned it, but there was a lot of good information on their website. So I do recommend checking it out. 
Uh, I felt a lot better about buying Drops yarn after reading that. Um, this is the Drops Alpaca Boucle, which is 80% alpaca, 15% wool, and 5% polyamide. And I just got the, the white looking color. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it, but I really want to try making something with Boucle because that's something I haven't done. And I'm always looking for something um, some yarn I haven't tried or some special patterns or techniques. It's nice to try new things. Uh, when I started knitting again, because I, I learned to knit when I was young, but when I started knitting again in medical school, I was always looking to learn like a new technique for every pattern. And I've knit a lot of garments since then. So it's not that often that I find... Um, a new technique in every pattern I knit. Often I just knit something, um, but it's nice to challenge oneself and learn new things and become a better knitter for it. So that's nice. I also bought an accessory. This is um, like a portable wallet for my interchangeable needles. And this is from Untold, which she's she's Norwegian based. She used to be called Gutten and Stikemor. And I have one of her cases from before, which was more for DPNs and like scissors and trinkets. This one is for uh, interchangeable needles. I do have a big brown one, which I have all my needles in, but I do find that taking a set out of it is a bit fiddly because you have to pull the leather leather through some holes and it, it's a bit stuck and hard to get through so it's it's not as easy to just grab a kit and go so I got this one to put my Haya Haya Sharps into to be my travel set because I have the Haya Haya Sharps from 2.75 millimeter needles up to eight or nine millimeters so it's a full set uh, with lots of wires so it's good for taking with me if I don't know what I'm gonna cast on because I know I'll have the needle size for whatever it is I need so uh, then the other one is gonna be left home at my knitting desk and then this is what I'll grab when I need to travel so I've put all of my Haya Haya's in here and I put little labels with the with the sizing and it has two pockets so I have one pocket with like the shorter wires and then I have one pa pocket with with the longer wires just to have a little bit of system but I did think that I I always need to have a needle like a darning needle and scissors with me plus the things to tighten up these on the wires so I bought this little nude pocket that they had in the store so I have my little scissors in here. These are my favorite scissors. They're just so sharp and they're golden and cute. And then I have the little things for tightening up the interchangeables. And I have my darning needle. The only thing that I am missing, also there's some stoppers if I want to put it on hold. The only thing I'm missing in this kit that I would put into it before traveling is some more stitch markers and they should be small stitch markers that can lay flat and I'll probably be putting some of these cords into the kit as well just so it's easy to put stitches on hold when uh, when traveling and then that's gonna be my perfect little flat travel kit and that was all of the knitting that I have to show you guys it was a long video after all sorry or not sorry I guess if you're still here either you enjoy long podcasts or you're returning to the episode I hope that you've enjoyed the content if you'd like to see more please feel free to subscribe like the video and if you want to be notified of new episodes you can always hit the little bell and it will give you a notification on YouTube when I upload new things um Thank you so much to everyone who supported me on Ko-Fi. That means so much. I'm honored to be a part of whoever you are out there who's watching this episode. If you're commenting, if you're writing to me, it's you guys make my day and I'm 
so blessed to to be here with you and on that note I will probably go and get myself some food so I can keep on knitting and keep on making things to show you guys and I will see you soon bye